Greetings, volume 111. Uh, today we're talking about, I'm still talking too loudly, uh, the Blue Youth Two Songs Plus EP, or EP Plus Two Songs, EP Plus EP, that was released on June, 8, June 18th, 2018. Uh, so, I guess this is the first in uh, a little line of these episodes where we're going to be talking about the Chronological Nightmares Volume... Well, this is Volume 1. Uh, there's going to be at least three or four of them. Um, we'll explain. If you were to take a look at how the ZBR numbers work, we've got a lot of X'd out ones happening here and things getting moved around. So, um, chronologically, this is a fucking nightmare. Uh, <laughs> uh, but release-wise, it's absolutely stellar, and definitely, uh, I, I, Bluth is a huge sleeper band on, on Zegma Beach, primarily because they are not, first and foremost, a screamy or metal band, they are a rock band first. So I really think maybe some people pass them over because of that, and if you do, you're fucking up! Because Blue Youth is sensational. Uh, they started in 2017 in uh, Regina, Saskatchewan. Uh, as a three-piece, uh, born out of a million other bands. Uh, let me try to read them off here. Bermuda Love, Surf Dads, Bright Black, Geronimo, The Dagan Harding Band, Ghosts of Modern Man, Pillar, Invasion, Big Day, Filmmaker, Library Voices, Slowdown, Molasses. At least those ones. Um, now, I also saw in discography, or Discogs, that uh, they have a fourth member? So... Maybe there's a new member now? I'm not really sure. Um, uh, kind of getting ahead of myself. But essentially this band, after this release, went on a hiatus, essentially, during the whole COVID era. And uh, didn't do anything. But uh, I'm pretty sure they had a practice in the last few months. And, and now the Discog shows a fourth member. So um, let's, let's all hope. Let's all, let's all hope and pray to the god of science. Um, anyway, let's get back to this. So this... This came about because of Chris Morris. Uh, Chris Morris is a writer for uh, well, a lot of different blogs, but at this particular juncture in time, he was writing for Dead Air at the Pulpit, which is uh, still the active blog uh, that he helps out with. Although I, I feel like there's been less posts as of late, but um, I think it's because he was just posting a ridiculous amount before. Uh, anyway, so he did a little like snippet review of the very first Blue Youth EP and cited North of America as a for fans of. And if anyone knows me, I love North of America and I love that, that like, semi-jangly but like noise rock, but the guy can kind of sing well as well and sometimes he like yells and stuff too. Just a, a perfect combination of stuff and they became the Holy Shroud afterwards. Uh, anyway, um, I saw that as a for fans of and I I immediately got really excited, and then, you know, 30 seconds into the first song, The Power, I was like, oh my god, this is so good. So I immediately reached out back in 2017 to the band, and I was like, yo, next release that you've got coming up, I really want to get it on that, because because this is this is absolutely phenomenal. Now this, uh, the, the first five song EP, which is a self-title, it's, it's, it's definitely like the poppiest of the stuff, but I wouldn't call it poppy at all. Um, I mean, sure, the power is a bit poppy uh, because of like the really beautifully done back backing vocals uh, during the chorus that just makes it so so sugary sweet. Um, again, uh, Gage has a very very good voice, um, but he knows how to scream too. So if you go through the five songs, I think like three or four of the out of the five have you know like some yelly like heavier parts too. Um, oh, right, I should probably liken them to some to some bands, so you know what I'm talking about. So we got some of the ones I've had is like Life in Vacuum, Metz, Campbell Trio. The early stuff sounds more like Monin, I feel like. It's got more of that like emo sensibility while still being like a noise rock thing. Uh, Drive Like Jehu, Q and Not You, the Frotus album, We Washed Our Weapons in the Sea, is very close to what Blue Youth sounds like, especially the later stuff, the two songs that also appear on this uh double EP. Uh, Decahedron, Christensen, Modern Rifles, Riddle of Steel, I think are all pretty good um, comparisons, but Blue definitely has their own thing going on. Um, so that was released May 19th uh, of 2017, the five song EP. Then they released an LP, and that's another Out Past the Rings that hasn't happened yet. So that happened in 2018. And then in 2000, 
19, they recorded two songs that were supposed to be for an upcoming LP, um, kind of like demoed essentially, and the, the two tracks are phenomenal and like a big step from everything that they've recorded has been the step. They got like the, the semi like more accessible but like really awesome first EP, and then you've got the full length which is, I don't even know, perfection, perfection of combining chaos and melody. It's just, it's awesome. And then the new two songs that show up on this as well, which is the reason for this release, um, much more quirky, um, maybe like more angular and disjointed, but it still like retains that blue sound and there's still a very excellent sense of melody. It's, it's just, um, it's not necessarily the focal point. It, the focal point is almost the awkwardness. Um, and yeah, way screamier, I would say, than the, the older material as well. So they released those two songs, and then I was like, yo, let's do these two songs. Two songs on a tape is kind of dumb. Let's do the two songs plus the old EP, because I really want to get involved in releasing that, even though it's already been released on tape. I don't care. I just want to, like, help put it out. At least I think it was put out on tape. Yes, I think it was. Wait, I'm just thinking of Dead Forever. Shut up, Dave. Uh, Dead Forever was definitely put out on tape by the band, and then I put it out on vinyl. But uh, that's a different note past the rings. So I did, uh, like, 50 copies, I think, on a blue, but... This was this was super early on in the Swirl days. Like this technically is not the first Swirl. The, the Miatej Riot Mutiny, which is God, 30, 30 out past the rings in the future, was the first Swirl. So these are kind of horribly done Swirl. I didn't realize. I don't remember what the issue was with this one. I think it was oh, it was the combination of paints. This is one of the reasons that led me to do test dips with tapes because. Sometimes if you don't have enough of an opaque color or like just like the right kind of uh, translucent color, they just don't mix properly and they harden and everything like the paints break up and that happened a lot with these ones. So I feel like these are some of the worst swirls that I've done and I also found out that doing it on uh, dark blue transparent shells, also not a good idea. Uh, I think I did like 25 of each. These are on uh, like a metallic -y sparkle cover and I did uh, two colors of them. I don't know how many of each I did. I just know the blue one is more rare. I think there's like 10 or 20 of those ones. Uh, the band took some copies too. Uh, after, like I said, after this, they kind of went on a I hate us. So I've been, again, this is chronologically out of order, but like I really missing my blue youth. So I really hope uh, something happens with them again soon because uh, pretty much like my favorite band. They're definitely up there in the top five. Uh, just absolutely phenomenal stuff. Like incredible vocals, uh, top notch noise rock, and like the vocals just like, are soaring. It's got like post hardcore alternative feel to those vocals as well. Um, and yeah, sometimes he screams. So it's, it's everything that I want all rolled up into one. Uh, I, I can't recommend this uh, first EP and last EP enough because you get both ends of the spectrum of the band. Um, and it actually starts with the two newer songs. Uh, no, it doesn't. Oh, online, on Bandcamp, I put the two new songs first, but on the tape, the two new songs are on the B-side. Uh, but definitely check them out. They're so, so good. Uh, excellent band. Uh, please check this out. There are, there is only one copy left in the Canada store, and I don't know if there's any left in the U.S. store or not, but like I said, we didn't do very many. Uh, they're pretty much all gone. So yeah, if you're into it, grab one. There was also some on blue, now that I recall, uh, that I did not even swirl, but I don't have any of those here, and I didn't keep any as personal copies, which is very unlike me. Uh, I feel like I'm rambling, so um, we'll stop it there. And uh, the next Out Past the Rings... Uh, oh, right, that was one of the things that was going to be included here. Uh, the release for this was supposed to be the Malisha Bahat 12-inch uh, of their very first EP. We were going to do a one-sided 12-inch with a uh, screened B-side of the tree, and uh, I was really stoked on that. And then ZBR happened in general, and I didn't have any money. Uh, so I was looking at how much it was going to cost for that, and it was I wanted it to be like a ZBR-only release. Uh, and it just kind of like fizzled, but uh, we ended up doing the Thus Far cassette tape for that. So I still got to release that stuff along with other songs. It just didn't end up uh, getting put on vinyl, but but maybe one day, because that first EP is just so good. 
Um, but yeah, so the next one is the CU Space Cowboy second grade knife fight split seven inch. Uh, that is in the correct order, so that will not be one of the chronological nightmares. Um, so yeah, uh, until next time.